Workplace safety is everyone's responsibility. Whether you're new to the job or have 20 years experience, it still only takes one slip up for a bad accident to occur. You must therefore always make safety your number one priority. You may not realize it, but if you're a new employee or have moved into a new job area in the company, you are in a high risk category. You have a new job environment to familiarize yourself with, new work procedures and tasks to learn, new people to know and communicate with, and new workplace pressures and hazards. All of this requires extra care and diligence on your part. In this video, we'll be highlighting some of the essentials of workplace safety. We'll look in particular at the different types of hazards which you need to guard against and suggest practical ways to make your workday a safe day. How well do you know your work area? It's vital that you're familiar with your work environment and the job you're required to undertake. Before starting work in a new area, walk around and familiarize yourself with your surroundings and check for any workplace hazards. Think about what could go wrong at each stage of what you do. Be prepared for an emergency situation. Know what to do if a fire breaks out or if a chemical spill should occur. Know where first attack firefighting equipment is located and how to use it. Find out where the medical center is and who are the first aiders in your area. Your company should also have a written health and safety policy. If you're not familiar with the policy, then ask to see it. Study it closely. There can be many dangers at work. Some obvious and some hard to detect. Your ability to identify hazards and assess the danger is vital not only to your safety, but also to that of your workmates. Let's now examine a range of common workplace hazards and look at the measures you can take to help reduce the risks. Poor housekeeping is so often found to be the cause of accidents at work. Protruding pipes, spilled water near an electrical cord, or as we've just seen, equipment left lying on the ground. By simply noticing these hazards and either removing the problem, repairing or reporting it, you'll be helping to prevent accidents. Never underestimate the hazards associated with poor housekeeping. And don't simply assume that someone else will come along and clear things up. Housekeeping is everyone's responsibility. Remember to keep workbenches, floors, aisles and access areas clear. Store tools, equipment and materials tidily and in their appropriate areas. Don't leave containers open. Firmly replace lids and caps. Never block fire extinguishers, emergency exits or first aid stations. And if you make a mess, then clean it up immediately. Slips, trips and falls are amongst the most common workplace accidents. Remember to slow down when traveling across greasy or wet surfaces. Hold on to railings and get greasy surfaces cleaned up or made less hazardous. Make a point of choosing non-slip footwear. If using a ladder, make sure it's the right one for the job. Place it on a firm, level surface. Use both hands for climbing. And hoist equipment up to the work area rather than trying to carry it up the ladder. Tie off the ladder to a secure object and don't stretch in order to reach something. Climb down and move the ladder instead. Falls are the second leading cause of accidental death at work. 
never become complacent or take unnecessary risks when working at height. Whenever you work with chemicals or other hazardous substances, you must always exercise caution and care. Get into the habit of firstly checking for any warning signs on the container. Read the label carefully. If you need more information or are unfamiliar with the material, then ask your supervisor for a copy of the relevant safety data sheet. This contains information which tells you how to use, handle and store the chemical safely. If you're not sure about how to handle or work with any hazardous substance, then don't take the risk. Ask your supervisor and find out before it's too late. When working with any hazardous substance, it's important to carefully assess your risk and adopt measures to avoid contact or exposure. Make sure you wear suitable personal protective equipment. For example, when decanting solvents, rubber gloves, eye protection and a full face visor should be worn. Avoid wearing clothing or safety equipment which has been contaminated. And always wash your hands thoroughly after working with hazardous substances. Remember that hazardous materials may enter your body by being absorbed through your skin or eyes, by being inhaled or by being ingested when you swallow. Make sure you know what to do in the event of a hazardous materials accident occurring. Because our bodies are made up mainly of water, they make excellent conductors. Electricity adopts a path of least resistance, and you could easily provide that path if you don't take care. Keep an eye out for electrical hazards, cracked or faulty insulation, equipment that's overheating, damp or humid conditions. Always adopt safe work practices when dealing with electricity. If you have wet hands, clothing or equipment, then dry them before use. Remove metal wristwatches, jewellery and belts with large metal buckles. Make sure you wear oil-resistant, non-conductive footwear. Before starting work, check to see that your tools are in good shape and clean. Check insulation thoroughly. Make sure your tools and equipment have insulated grips. Double insulated tools provide even further protection. Remember to keep power cords well away from heat sources, wet areas, sharp objects, and other places where they could get damaged. When using electrical equipment at heights, or if you're near power cables, ideally use non-conductive wooden or fiberglass ladders. Remember to keep as far away from power lines and electric cables as possible, especially in damp conditions. If you're required to undertake repairs or carry out maintenance work, then make sure that circuits and equipment have been locked off and caution notices applied to prevent them being activated. Many accidents are caused by personnel ignoring this basic safety measure. The potential for a fire to break out in your workplace should never be underestimated. Even small fires will involve disruption and a reduction of output which benefits no one. So what exactly should you as an employee do to help reduce the chance of a fire breaking out? For a start, you need to be on the lookout for possible fire hazards, such as electrical wiring defects, flammable vapors and dust, accumulated rubbish or flammable liquid spills, and hot work activities. When carrying out hot work, make sure, whenever possible, that the work is carried out in designated areas where no fire risk exists. There should be no combustible material in the near vicinity, and check to see that firefighting equipment is close by. Remember that good housekeeping and the proper disposal of rubbish and waste material 
is a vital part of any fire safety program. You must also know what to do in a fire emergency situation. Remember to follow your company's fire response procedures, keep your head, and above all, don't panic. As a general rule, if fire breaks out, firstly, attend to anyone who's in immediate danger, but only if it's safe to do so. Where possible, close off the affected area so as to limit the spread of fire. Raise the alarm and call the fire brigade. The next step is to try and attack the fire, but once again, only attempt this if it's safe to do so. Know where fire extinguishers and hose reels are located. It's important to use the right type of extinguisher on the material which is burning. Ordinary combustible materials such as wood, paper and textiles are best extinguished by using water. In the case of flammable liquids, use foam extinguishers to smother the flames. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are good general purpose extinguishers and are ideal for use on electrical fires. Dry powder extinguishers can also be used on electrical fires but are not as effective on wood or paper fires as water extinguishers. Do not use a water or foam extinguisher on an electrical fire. You could electrocute yourself. If the fire alarm goes off in your area, immediately stop working and evacuate to the assembly area. Remain at the assembly area until everyone's accounted for and the all clear has been given. The tasks you undertake every day will normally involve wearing some form of personal protective equipment. PPE, as it's commonly referred to, may include items such as earmuffs, protective eyewear, safety harnesses and so on. It's easy to take for granted, but PPE is there for a reason. And as we've just seen, it's worth the effort to put it on. Whenever you wear PPE, don't let it give you a false sense of security. The hazards are still out there. By wearing PPE, you're just limiting your exposure to those hazards. You must therefore make sure that other control measures are in place to reduce the risks. When choosing PPE, make sure it matches the hazard. It should fit correctly, be comfortable, and it must be compatible with other items of PPE. If you don't know how to correctly wear an item of PPE, or if you're not sure it matches the hazards present, then consult your supervisor. The tools and equipment you use must be kept in safe working order. Check tools, equipment and machinery before use. With machinery, it's a good idea to have a written pre-operation checklist which you should go through before commencing work. If any faults or problems are identified, then immediately get these attended to. Don't attempt to operate faulty equipment. Make sure you choose the right tool or piece of equipment for the job. Don't improvise or try to push a piece of equipment beyond its safe operating level. And don't use a machine unless you've been fully trained in its correct use. Right here, this is the overhead hoist. Yes, boy. And these are the controls. Obviously that one is for down, and that one is for up. I haven't used one of these before, Brian. Well, I've received training. Uh, you won't need training on this. The more you use it, the more you will get used to it. I'd become more comfortable if I had training, Brian. No, you'll find the more you use it, the more it easier it becomes. Better with training, Brian. Entry into a confined space 
can be one of the most hazardous activities undertaken in the workplace. Be aware of the confined spaces which may exist in your work environment. Generally, there'll be areas with limited openings for personnel to enter and exit and are not designed for regular occupancy. They may be areas which contain or cause an accumulation of atmospheric hazards. They may also have a deficiency or oversupply of oxygen. Confined space entry is a specialized field requiring detailed training and a thorough understanding of the appropriate work and safety practices. Don't attempt to enter a confined space unless you're fully trained and know what you're doing. It only takes one false move for disaster to strike. Your back needs to be treated with care. It only has to be injured on one occasion and you could be afflicted with back problems for the rest of your life. Wherever possible, save your back by using mechanical aids to move loads. The key to proper lifting is to keep the three curves of your back in their natural positions. Always adopt the following essential steps. Firstly, stop and think. Plan the lift by checking the weight of the load. Are there any suitable mechanical aids which could be used? Have you checked the place where you're going to put the load to see that there are no obstructions? Stand close to the load with feet apart so that you have a balanced, stable base for lifting. Do not bend your back. Bend at the knees and keep your back as straight as possible. Get a firm grip and move the load close to your body. Don't jerk the load. Lift it smoothly. Always keep your arms and the load close to your body. And when turning, use your feet rather than twisting the body. Where possible, avoid pulling a load. Pushing puts less strain on your back and it also lets you put more force behind your body. Be especially cautious of reaching down and behind. This movement places a severe strain on your body. Try and use any available support. For example, in this awkward lifting situation, pressure on the back is reduced by placing a hand on the workbench to support the upper body. Replacing the battery in your car is made easier by resting your thighs against the car. They help to take some of the weight of the load. And remember, don't try to act the hero. If there's a potential risk to your back, then find a mechanical aid or get someone to help you. Stress at work is something that we all experience from time to time. Impossible deadlines, coming to grips with new technology, clashes with management or outside work concerns are just some of the factors which can affect our stress levels. Stress can be dangerous. It can affect our ability to concentrate and our ability to deal effectively with an emergency at work. If you think that stress could be affecting you, then communicate your concerns with your supervisor. He or she will want to help. Remember that good communication is the key to combating stress. It may sound corny, but learning to smile more often will often diminish stress levels. Smiling causes the blood supply to the brain to increase, feeding it with essential nutrients. This helps to create a more positive mood. Also, make more time for relaxation, exercise and play. Stress can be managed. Work out what it is that could be causing your stress and do something about it. As we've seen in this video, workplace accidents can be prevented if you adopt an attitude of work safety. Don't simply rush into a job. Always take the time to assess a work situation 
and find ways of reducing the risks before proceeding. If you are new to a job, then you are particularly vulnerable. But even experienced workers also need to make safety their number one priority. Complacency on the job will end in disaster. It just needs that one slip up to occur. So make sure you stay alert. Let's make every day a safe work day. Think safety.